thanks to everybody who's coming out. Um, I put this together. I put this talk together kind of quickly, so I apologize if it's. Uh, I, I think I got it solid enough to make sense. I think I got about an hour's worth, but um, it's a good amount of uh, time for questions. Um, so, elephants who perform surgery: a post rest and PG admin <coughs> for a tour. Um, oh, thank you. So, as always, that's my information. Um, you, you, you can scan that, it will actually work. Um, anything we talk about here or anything else, feel free to contact me. I'm pretty responsive on email. Um, and of course, you know, if, if um, you know, there's any random stuff, you know, feel free, feel free to throw it at me. I'm always interested in learning some new things. Um, so this presentation. Uh, this is going to be a technical talk, and it really is just limited to databases. I'm going to be talking about some other things, but the point is to get back to the strength of databases and why, in this case, which is going to include a, um, a case study uh, or, or a reason why I did this at all, um, it, it really comes down to the power of databases. So um, what I want you to keep in mind is even though I'm talking about Postgres here, which uh, those of you who know me know I'm a huge fan of Postgres, but it doesn't have to be Postgres. I, I just want you to think of the power of databases. So uh, just a little bit of background, a little bit of history, a little bit of motivation. Uh, I've been using Postgres since about the late 90s, so I think 97, so 20, 22 years, somewhere around there. And the one thing that's always impressed me about Postgres is that uh, the development team is solid. Um, they've come a really, really long way in 20 years. And I think that's probably the case for most solid FOSS projects. But in particular with Postgres, there's, um, there's some visibility there that maybe some of the projects don't have. Um, everybody here knows what .org is, right? Okay, so unless something's changed, .org is actually served with Postgres databases. It's kind of a big deal. Um, and that's, that's been the case for a while. The one thing about Postgres that is sort of impressive, uh, but not really, because again, solid development team and they've been, you know, they've gotten things dialed in, it's been two decades, is that they keep adding features now. So this is no longer about having a database and making sure everything's okay and, and you know, we're not um, losing data or things are getting corrupt. But Postgres has been adding new features and new capabilities. Uh, and in fact, uh, Bruce Monagin, who works for Enterprise DB, who's the corporate sponsor of Postgres, he gave a talk about two years ago that was talking about some of these things. And at the time, I wasn't doing any of some of the different, the different things, uh, the, the new things that were in Postgres. Every application I've written that's a serious application, meaning it's customer facing, someone's paying for it, I've done with Postgres. Sometimes that might have been overkill, but for me, it's a comfort zone. I understand the product. I, I understand sort of the culture of the team. I used to hang out at IRC and, and do troubleshooting for uh, the Postgres. Uh, somewhere there's, I think, a patch that might mention me because I was talking to one of the developers one night in Australia and he helped somebody figure something out that, um, that I discovered actually wasn't working properly. So um, it's, it, it's, a, it's where I'm most comfortable, but as you'll see, there's some really some serious chops here that, Post, that Postgres has that other, that other uh, systems do not. Uh, in particular, we're going to be talking about full text search and some of the Note SQL workloads. It, it also has some very good geospatial manipulation functions, and um, there's a whole other project called, uh, I think it's PostGIS, which is really targeting the, uh, that sort of geospatial mapping environment. Um, I put the uh, URL here for our feature matrix in case you're interested in that, but you can just go to Postgres' site and um, just do a search for feature matrix. They have a very good website. It's very well organized, and you'll pretty much find all the documentation and information you need there. Um, getting more to the motivation for this, uh, for this talk. One of the issues that I've seen over the last probably 20 years is that um, 
we um, when we talk about application development, or actually, when we talk about databases, we don't talk about databases. We talk about a lot of other things, and then eventually the database, because we have to store data someplace. So it's an indirect conversation. And um, unfortunately, uh, and I was guilty of this once upon a time too, uh, the application developers are they don't understand databases and they miss a lot of the functionality and power of databases in favor of reinventing the wheel and doing it themselves. Now, for me, this was about taking a step back from it. Okay, you'll see in the case study why, because I was faced with something and the question is, how do you solve it, right? We're, we're all very smart people here and, and a lot of us are programmers, so it's not a big deal to just start programming to fix something. But I purposely stopped myself because I knew that this was appropriate for a database. The question was, how was I going to do it? So the raw strength of a database is rooted in being able to get your data organized, analyzed, and transposed before you do some sort of output with it. All right? That's the core basis of a database. It's you put your data someplace, and then you're going to do something with it. And those are the three major categories you're going to do something with your data. Um, this is what I call surgery, all right? So for those of you who know, the colophon for Postgres is an elephant. So elephants who do surgery, right? Makes a little bit of sense. It wasn't that drunk when I put this together. Um, one of the issues that happens with databases that is part of the reason why people like to invent the wheel is because People don't understand database systems, even in professionals. How many people have seen the ginormous spreadsheet that someone has to go support, right, when it crashes a person's system? Maybe somebody in the accounting department has seen a lot of that. Those are users. We sort of expect that. We send them the training, you know, um, you know throw them in access, right? That was basically the thing that in the Windows world you would do. You're not going to deploy SQL Server and write an application for something, so they go ahead and throw it in access. And then, of course, that becomes the wrong product and then you use it wrong, and then you have to give another database course, right? Okay, well, what about those of us who are programmers? Well, we get this wrong, too, because programmers all have exactly the same problem. We have a guide talk for us because we can create something, literally. We want to do something, we just go ahead and do it. We can create something. This is not a big deal, right? Especially in 2019, we've got languages that do some of this, you know, do some very complex data manipulations as just function calls now. It's not a big deal. But that's the problem. It's not a big deal. So we're not forced to learn some of the things that we should learn. And one of the things we should, in my opinion, learn is how to use a database. Because your application, when you put it together, is going to be couple of months, a couple of weeks, right? These guys have been doing it for 20 years, and they still have bugs too. Your stuff is going to have a lot of bugs because it's new. So you can leverage database functions, not only because these folks have been doing it longer and have a development cycle and all the processes in place to catch this stuff, but why reinvent the wheel, right? So what we're left with is the mm. concept of being pretty. Again, I'm totally guilty of this. I'm a function over form guy. And as a technical person, as an engineer, uh, I'm always going to put function before form. But as I came to learn, form is not unimportant. And for a lot of time, in all honesty, I, I just I couldn't be bothered, right? I got the code to work, it put out the right data, and then someone says, well, can you format it this way, right? I'm driving nuts. It's one of the reasons I got out of doing regular websites, because I can't argue with somebody about the right shade of green, okay? Or the wrong font. Uh, however, uh, we all know this now. It's pretty well understood that if an application does not look nice, it does not at least have a flow that's going to be inviting to people and make them want to use the tool, they're not going to use the tool. And this gets back to why people don't like using databases. They're awkward to work with. All right? um, 
in 2019, we've got, again, more advanced clients, and we're going to get to that in a second. But if you look at the whole history of it, that advent has been new. Okay? A lot of the stuff we're doing now is what? Web-based, <sighs> right? And most of us who are writing applications, especially web-based applications, we're all using some of these toolkits that are out there. Why do we do that? They look good. And you don't want to reinvent the wheel unless you're just that much of a fan of JavaScript. You like doing that stuff, right? Or maybe you're writing a toolkit, so hats off to you if you're doing that. But most of us are just users of that stuff. But it looks good. Even, even when I do applications, I do web applications, and I use as many of these libraries as I can. You know? So point is, it's not cake. You got to do both. So that was sort of one of the reasons that I wanted to go back to basics here and see if I could get that balance of can I do things with the proper tool and still have that thing that looks slick and is going to make you want to use it. So we get into the clients now. PG Admin 3 has been a long time um, management tool for Postgres. And which something I didn't know until a couple weeks ago, it, it was completely re rewritten for, as you can imagine, PG Admin 4, which, as you'll see, has a much more modern look. Uh, how many Postgres users are here? Oh, okay, good. Um, so you're familiar with PG Admin 3? All right. It kind of looks like Windows 95, right? I mean, it's a little bit dated. It's WX Widgets. Uh, I prefer the interface of PG Admin 3 to PG Admin 4. Do you really? Okay. <clears throat> but I was used to it. I really didn't care that PG Admin 4 looks nicer. Mm -hmm. It's like, because PG Admin 4 is JavaScript and it's uh, CSS based, mm -hmm. it got really, like, I, I don't get as much of my query editor on screen. Yes. And, and that is actually. The main complaint I have it is against it is its use of screen real estate is less efficient. And Fair point. even with my big screen, uh -huh. when you've got your tree and you've got a results window and a query you're working on, it's very tight. Yeah. And it's funny you say it. You're probably the only other person that 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 would have, well not obviously we've got other users, but I I initially had that feeling too. But I, I sort of embraced my inner demon to say, what's going to make me, because I had a problem I wasn't sure I was going to solve, right? And you revert into doing things that are most comfortable when that happens. So the, when you talk about three versus four, I'm not sure which happened first, but there's a, the form question, and we, we all admit, even, even though you like three better, it does look dated. It still works, but it looks dated. But in terms of it working, PG Admin 3 does, doesn't have all of the modern capabilities of PG Admin 4. Uh, it can't do all of the same things. It's not hooked into all of the objects. And, and, and also, if you look at the website, they're no longer even developing. So even if it was in sync, eventually it would not be in sync. <laughs> that, that said, I mean, I still use both of them because I have it on my, my servers. Um, however, what you do get is with PG Admin 4, something that does have that sort of form and that nice look to it, but also has all the modern functionality that uh, Postgres has to offer. <sighs> so it's cake and pie. Right? <laughs> a little bit of both. Now, here's a case study. Um, I'm one of those people that was active on Google Plus. Don't throw things, don't laugh. <laughs> Did you lose that? <laughs> there's, there's several hundred million of us. Yeah. And we're all wearing black armbands. We're wearing mostly black today. Right. Um, and half of them are inactive anyway. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is at least 200 million that are. So, out of the 600 million, 200 million of the servers are upset. Now, that said, jokes aside, uh, there's a problem. I've been on there since 2011. That's a lot of years. It's a lot of stuff. I want my stuff because I'm sort of irked with Google, and even though I'm allowed to, uh, where is it, uh, use Google Takeout to get my data, uh, the question becomes, what do you do with it, right? 
uh, I spend all this time. I mean, think about it. If, you, if you've done anything for a certain amount of time that you've produced, okay, content, and I know, and I know a lot of us may not be content people, but embracing your artistic side, you're a musician, photographer, or whatever, that type of stuff you may do. Uh, if all of a sudden you lost a bunch of your history, you would be upset, right? Because, because this is stuff you've produced yourself. So there's sort of an emotional attachment to it. Even if it's just a, a very low attachment, there's an attachment to it. So I wanted to keep my information. Um, now, in my head, there's, there's two problems. Can I get the information? The answer is yes. Second question is, what can I do with that information? Is it usable, right? If I give you a floppy drive now, and I say, here are, all the, you know, here are the codes to the vault at the Fed for the gold, and it's on a floppy disk, uh, not three and a half, five and a quarter. <laughs> what, what the hell am I going to do? You don't have it on an eight inch? You know, this is awesome. I've got the keys to the kingdom. On the you can <laughs> find me a floppy drive. Well, you know, a five and a quarter floppy drive, we'll see, right? So it's security by obscurity, as some people like to say. Uh, or uh, it's unusable. I can't do anything with it. So I wanted to make sure I could actually do something with the data. Because at a minimum, I want to be able to view this problem. Okay? There's probably something in there that, who knows, a couple of years from now I may say, you know, once upon a time I wrote something or had a conversation with somebody, and I want to refer to it, right? So I don't know. Organizing data and being able to do stuff with it, well, that sounds like a database function, right? And it's PG. So, moving on, um, they allow you to do JSON or HTML. Now, CJ, who did not admit he was a Google Plus user, because he's hiding, uh, did HTML, right? Yeah. You said you did HTML. I, I thought that was insane when you told me, because you did yours before I did mine. I said, Just, what am I going to do with HTML? I don't want to search for HTML files. I've done that before. I want to like, stab my eyeballs. I don't know what to Unpack it and throw it under a document room. <laughs> um, I, and, and then use what? Fine. I mean, I find the HTML I've ever Just a short one line script to put all the images in one place, because I, I mostly put photographs up. Uh, you, but you wanted your, you, you were going to be immediate. I want the images, yeah. You want him, okay, you want your media. Okay, well that's, okay, that's different. I, mean, I'm, I appreciate you mentioning one liner, because I have one. Um, but I said, okay, I, I need something that's going to be in a form I can make and manipulate. Now, I, I do not like unstructured data, all right? I had to do an application <laughs> XML once upon a time, and yeah. I, I was angry for about six months, okay? <laughs> it, it, was, it was miserable. So I see, so the first time I saw JSON, I was, you know. Uh, the reality of it is that if you think about what a social media post is, it's, it's unstructured, right? It's not that you have media in yours. You might have text, there's links, uh, there's conversation going back and forth, right? So you don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be unstructured, right? Well, in my head, oh my god, i got to work with JSON? Again, I'm more of an engineer than a programmer, I freely admit that. I, I program as a function of engineering, which is to get stuff done. I am not a programmer at all, even though I've been doing it a long time. Um, so I need something more. That's where Postgres comes in because Postgres, as you'll see, has an ability to manipulate JSON. The other thing was, for a change, I wanted to learn something new. Selfishly, because I got about two applications I need to write this year that may deal with unstructured data. And I wanted to not have to deal with unstructured data. I want someone else to deal with it. In this case, the data is, right? Because again, if I have to write a tool to deal with this, I'm going to get it wrong. See, unlike programmers, engineers can be honest about things like that, right? We kind of like getting things wrong as, as engineers, actually, because uh, it's, it's kind of fun. But I don't want to deal with that, because I've got to get something done, so I want the right tool. OK. so. Why Postgres as a tool? Well, a couple of things. I mentioned this earlier. JSON, particularly JSONB, it's a data type that gives you an efficient storage of your JSON data. And it allows you to actually access the, 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 um, 
the information inside of that JSON, that, um, that JSON object. Is the whole thing referred to as an object? Am I, is yeah. Okay. yeah, it's an object. Um, so it allows you to use that object, but also pull the stuff out of it very easily. Okay? Um, that's the second piece, to be able to deconstruct and view the JSON data, but in a database sort of SQL-like way. So it doesn't feel like I'm using unstructured data. In addition to that, um, so we've known Google Plus has been going away for a while. And um, some of us, you know, maybe Google might wake up. They didn't, so it just came real last month. And um, I said, well, I'm going to have to keep doing a couple of these takeout things, right? Well, if you do one and you do another one, you would think, well, it's just going to give me the difference from here to here. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. So if you got a 100 gig archive the first time, you're going to get a 100 gig archive the second time. Now, how do I handle that? Because it's the same data, and you've got to find the differences, meaning CJ or me. But in my case, I'm not finding the differences. PG's finding the differences because I'm going to prevent duplicates when I import the data. It's going to reject them, so I don't have a look. The most important thing, however, is being able to somehow search and view this data because I, I'm not just going to do a find and a grab through uh, a directory. Uh, I just I didn't want to do that. I couldn't do that. Uh, you get the files; they're flat files. You can search JSON files. It's not a big deal. It's just something that you have to do, and it'll, it'll take whatever time it takes. Makes the search syntax kind of interesting, though, right? How do you actually do that? When you when we think of search, what do we all think of typically? Google bar. Another honest guy, right? Regular right. expression. Right. What you guys all delaying for? Who doesn't use Google? Yeah. I kind really? of don't. Really? Okay. So you guys don't search know. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, but you, but none of you guys answer, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was quiet. He said Google. He's right. We think of a search box, right? So we think of a search box. We think of search-like syntax. We don't think of SQL query statements, do we? Okay. Well. PG has full text searching. You can also index. And keep in mind, though, this is against these JSON objects, not structured data. So this now, you know, when I thought about this, I said, well, this looks like a good, um, a, a good thing to do with PG. It sounds like it'll hit all the notes. Um, all right. So that's about Postgres. Now, um, I wasn't going to work on the the command line with Postgres, which I will tell you already that I'm lying because I did, um, to do the import, I wanted to have some sort of interface, right? So this is where PG Admin 4 comes into play. And really the difference between 3 and 4 is that first bullet point. One of my issues with working with uh, PG Admin 3, maybe I need to talk to you, John, more about this, is that uh, importing and exporting data if I'm on my workstation, right, and I need to get something to my server, so I can launch PG Admin 3 from my server and do a display back, okay, over, you know, SSH, X, whatever. That's, that's easy to do. Um, but I, I've never had good success importing data that way. And PG Admin 3 is, is a full client, so depending on my situation, uh, it may not be best to do this, right? It'd be nice to have maybe something that is like a web client that the client is responsive and I'm able to do all this without having to SSH into a box and do a display back and, and things like that. Um, well, with PG Admin 4, you're able to do that. Uh, I also use PG to do to uh, prepare my uh, bank statements for uh, tax season. So I've got enough, you'll see when I log in, I've got other databases in there that um, what I do is I actually import my bank statements into a schema that organizes that stuff for me so I can tag it and send it off to uh, my account. And that's just importing CSV files through a web browser to the database system. I thought that was pretty cool. Right. These other things are part of pretty much any tool for any database. You get yourself a SQL query window. That's an essential thing. 
uh, the, the ability to view your raw table data and apply your filters and sorting to that. Because, depending, you know, only looking at a couple of records, you don't necessarily want to write a query for that. You just put your filter and sort statement right in your view. Uh, your, um, when you're viewing your table data, you can adjust what it's actually showing. Uh, so it's, it's convenient if you don't want to have to write a SQL query. Uh, if you're good at databases, you're just going to write the SQL query because it's honestly faster. Um, and of course, the ability to modify the scheme itself. One of the things that I found is that after I initially designed this, I kept going back to it and adding things to it as I was learning more about what was actually inside the JSON that I was um, that that I got from uh, Google Tab. Um, okay, so this is essentially the whole thing. It's one table. And that one table has an ID field, which acts as the primary key, and also a data field um, for a JSON B object. Essentially it. All right? That's the goal. Get it into that, and then I can do some things with it. Here's the one line. So even though you can import and export data, there's a problem with the JSON Google gives you. Those of us who are, and I think it's everybody here, we all work with Linux and Windows, and there's a classic problem we always have to deal with because of these damn Windows people, right? Carriage returns. <laughs> so, when I first got this, I said, okay, I know how to import stuff into PG, and this thing immediately started screaming at me. What the hell are you talking about? That is not spec JSON. So I had to read up on JSON. There's no character returns, right? Because the computer doesn't need that. We need it as human beings. That's the pretty JSON. So the first thing I do, and this is very, this is a, you know, I don't think this is surprising to any of us who are familiar with this, right? We got to get rid of those character returns. But then we've got the other Linuxy and Unixy problem, right? Backslashes. That doesn't mean what you think it means, Mr. Windows person. That, that, that's, that's significant to us. You can't, twice, right? What's that? You have to escape it twice, right? You have to escape it twice, which turns into four times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been doing it for so long, we don't challenge some of this crap anymore, right? <laughs> you say that like it's a fan. <laughs> kind of makes you, we'll make fun of the Windows folks, but then we're secretly we're going, okay, who do we kill? Okay, because really. <laughs> so you do that, and then now the beauty of, I mean, the, 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 okay, sidebar. Don't we just geek out over these one-liners, right? Because it's just cool. When is the last time you saw someone in PowerShell do some of this stuff, right? I know they can, but I, I never see it. They don't geek out over it, right? We geek out over stuff like this because it's really cool. Um, my Google Archive is 4,800 posts. So it's 4,800 files. So in this one-liner, I'm ingesting 4,800 uh, posts, uh, processing 4,800 files in one shot, removing the carriage returns, escaping all of the backslashes in one file. You think about what's going on here. This is, this is kind of slick, right? Um, it's one of the cases where you don't use a GUI. Just, just do it this way. And it runs quick. And when I say quick, since we all know we're sensitive to things like that now, uh, this took under a minute. Close to a minute, but un but but under a minute, pretty pretty consistent. Uh, for the for the full for like a blank scheme and then pulling everything in. Um, now the only little thing that's a little bit different here is that what you're seeing me do here, and uh, JP Voss will be screaming because you should never do something like that. He's a full guy, right? Okay, I can't get this talking west. <laughs> uh, deservedly so, hope you all love me. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm saying only process the 2011 files. What Google does nicely is that every post has a, a date on it, okay, and a partial, and a piece, and a piece of the name. So this literally just says process all my 2011 posts because when I was first starting out, uh, one I had no idea how many files I had, um, but I knew I started in 2011. That was going to have the least amount of files. Um, they're about to me. I, I hadn't done 20. Um, well, I did. Do, I did this in February, so there were some things from 2019. But I figured I'll just start with the beginning. Um, Okay. Questions so far? Can you go back a second? Sure. Can you do that 
the ID integer and that default one. So what I'm confused yeah. about is that's creating your whole table and importing all the data into it? This is the definition of the table. Okay, so okay. where the, the, well I guess for later we're going to the column headings, where are those coming from? I, ID is the column heading. Okay, so. Data is column heading, and these are the types. Integer, which is not null because it becomes a constraint here. Okay, so the entire JSON object is an ID to the post and then the yes. value, either like the text I'm, or the. We're, we're going to, we're going to, um, we're, we're doing it live. You're going to see this in, in, in action. So there's a constraint. If their ID is serial, it would do the whole not null and create the sequence. I, I did. When you, yeah, you're right. But when you view the SQL, this is what you're talking about. Oh, right, because that expands yeah. it so you're looking so, at yeah, it. So, yeah, you, so you'll see what's happening. I, I didn't, <laughs> I'm not, well, yeah, I am pretty smart, but I'm not that smart. I, I didn't do like all of this. I put it in the way he said, the simple way, and then this is what you get back. And I'll show oh, so you, you put that in and in, in for it. Okay. You okay. literally you say what John just said. It's create, uh, this would say integer, and uh, actually not integer, it would say serial. Okay, and what that does is it gives you a sequence, which I'm going to show you. And the sequence, what's the sequence? String of numbers, right? But it can't be null because I'm trying to ID something. So it's not null. And it also happens to be, in this case, the primary key. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I guess since you're generating the primary key, this isn't doing your deduplication. Not yet. Not yet. We're getting there. Okay, well, I'm, yeah, enough talk. Let's get the elephant scalp, right? Okay. In, is this, uh, this is not quite the full screen. All right, so, uh, I don't have a picture of three to show you, but this is four. Um, and you'll see as we're moving around, it's a modern web application. Uh, I'm already logged in, and you'll see, as John pointed out, this thing starts to just flow. Now, one of the things that I liked about this that I never got working in three, but I think it was kind of there, is I get all of, oh, is that is I get some of these performance tables, okay? That's, that's just there, all right? I didn't have to do anything extra to add that. I also get my users. I'm usually an admin. Sometimes admins have to kick people off. Very simple to do it here. Okay. This is regular stuff. Those are my counting things up there. This is the first export I did, and then I also mm. did a, basically a, a clone of this, and it's called a G plus demo. Uh, just so, I mean, it doesn't matter because I have all the data, but I just did another one for that. Um, so, what I want to do, we're at 33 minutes. I'm going to walk through some of this. And then we're going to do some, um, now I'm going to do some queries, all right? So if I, if I go too fast or I'm going to be looking down here, just say something and I'll, and I'll stop. So the first thing I want you to be aware of for this. Also, is this big enough or should I enlarge it? Good. Good? All your eyes better than mine. Good. Okay. First thing you need here, which goes to, someone's asking about the rejecting of the, okay. You need PG Crypto, which is an extension in Postgres. Um, I compile all my LAMP stuff, which includes the database. So I compile this. When you compile Postgres, um, when you do make world, it builds everything. It doesn't, I don't think it necessarily installs it, though. Uh, but it's there. If you're installing from a package manager, it's something like PG Extensions. Okay. So you need the PG Crypto module because that's how we're going to handle creating a unique identifier. And you security folks should probably know where this is already done. Um, in addition to that, here's the table. And hmm. for those who aren't familiar with this tool, if I click SQL and I click, the, click an object on the left, actually click the table, it gives you the SQL that creates that object. All right. Now, this is pretty slick because it's giving me everything under that table definition, which is probably more than I need because if I just want to see the table definition, it's literally just this piece here that I showed you. Okay. 
This is not actually what I put in, but this is what the system is actually generating. So if, and this is portable, if I dump out just the schema, you're going to get this, even though you may actually put it in a little bit different. Um, but what it's also showing us is, you see here this constraint, right, primary key. Uh, also, I should go back to here because this is the sequence, and you see I'm clicking it, and it's telling you what it's doing in the background. I didn't have to say create sequence or anything like that, okay, when I created this table because the ID field was not an integer, it was actually a serial, which takes care of some of, this, uh, of these other things, um, including all the alter commands. If you go back down here for a second, you'll notice some things that are sort of extraneous. Um, table space PG default. You don't type that in as the person writing the schema. It's going to automatically do that, unless you want to put it someplace else. These days, we generally don't use OIDs in Postgres. <laughs> it used to be that way. It's a global identifier for all objects in the system. Um, it's just really not used that way anymore. So when you look at the schema this way, it's almost set to false. Again, that's not something you type in. If you want OIDs, because maybe you exported a database, a previous Postgres database, and it has OIDs, and maybe it's 10 million records, and you don't want to remove that column, you can add it back in. And then drop the table, uh, drop the column. Uh, what else? A couple of indexes. So this gets into the, the sort of the raw power behind um, the, the database itself. <coughs> The, the, the important piece here is right there. There's two things, actually, let me go with this one, because this was actually the first one. Hmm. There's a content field, which is actually the text of the post that you're making. So what I wanted to do is create a full text search on that. And that is how you do it in Postgres. There's an important piece to this to make sure you use the index. You have to always include the, 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 uh, the two-column variant here, the two-parameter variant, which is the language you're creating the full text search for. The default language is English. If for some reason I wanted to create a full text search using Spanish, I can do that. To use the index, you always have to specify it because they want to make sure you never have a collision, meaning that <sighs> putting your default language aside from the database, if you want to index on something else, it's possible, and it's not going to confuse the system. And um, I'll show you what happens when you, when you omit that. Um, but this, note, this, what you see here, this is taking that JSON column and saying, give me that content element in there and the data in there. So I'm not doing anything that is, if you look at this, it just looks like a, an index uh, statement, right? It doesn't look any stranger other than uh, mm. the syntax itself being strange. But the JSON is actually, there's the object, the content data there. And that's the, this part of what's here is saying, um, the field inside my JSON object. So I'm able to create an index directly on something inside of it. So I do that with the content field and also the comments field. How do we prevent duplicates? Well, how do you identify something digitally? You need a what? Hash. Hash, right? Because a hash is a digital thing. I'm surprised that Google and their export didn't use some kind of ID for each post that you could have extracted. But you know America what that's not. yes, mm -hmm. I, it's funny you said it. I actually thought they were. I was ex I was expecting something cryptic like that. No, they keep, they actually kept it clean, which in one sense maybe is better because then you get to maybe do it yourself. But then you have sort of this this duplication problem because again you're getting that full set every time, you know. So. You need the PG crypto because what I do is I create a SHA-1 hash for the entire JSON object uh, right there, data. So this is on that table, and it's that entire 
and that entire field. It's nothing, it's not what's inside it, it's the entire object itself. Does it index every column or do you tell it what column to index? I'm telling it to index on, in this case, the entire data column. But you tell what columns or where did you sit, tell it? Where did you get the Right, right, yeah, data is a column. If you see, that's the field right there. This is the ID I, and that's the Okay, you told it in, in PG4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what this does, it creates a functional index because this is generated at, at, the, at the time you're doing the insert. Uh, but because that is happening, if you try to insert something again, it's a unique index. It's not going to allow it. So now I don't have to think about duplicates. It'll just reject it. And it's si it doesn't silently fail. It fails and just keeps going. Can't insert, can't insert, can't insert. Oh, copy, 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 can't insert. It just keeps on going. So you can process this and process it again, and you're just going to get a, a whole, your screen is just going to say it can't insert, but it's not going to affect anything. Um, finally, I have an index on, uh, oh, actually, I should also mention, so you probably might be wondering, what does gin mean? I forget, it's an index type. B tree, just. I think what it stands for, something inverted. Yeah, gen and gist are inverted, and depending on what you're doing, one form is better than the other. Gin, gin is better on reads, gist is better on reads. And gin, I believe gin is bigger on disk. They're both pretty big on disk. Yes, yes, correct. So when you're, uh, so the way they do these full, these are inverted indexes. If you want to learn more about that, go to the PG site, they, they get into it. When you're doing full text, in, uh, um, full text indexing, you're going to use a gin type of index. So it's just the type of index it is. You could use gist, and in the future you use something else. But that's the, the one that they, if you look at the example in the documentation, that's the one they use. In this case, that's a, that's a while because constructing inverted index is a pain. From, what, from the little bit I know of it, it is a pain. As a programmer, did you, would you want to do that? Probably not. You've been done that. Okay. Yeah, they've been there and done that, just use it, right? And they've been optimizing it. Yeah. And they've been optimizing it. Right, so one of Bruce's points is that for no SQL workloads, Postgres is faster than MongoDB. He said that two years ago. So, and this is, that was version 10 something. This is 11, this, this is actually 11.1. 1. Uh, 11 11.2 just came out, but it's the same. It's, it's just minor changes. Um, this particular index does not get used. I did this initially because I thought I'd need it. I just never dropped it from the system. But it's there, so I'm just pointing it out in case you want. Um, okay, so that gets my data in. Now, what am I going to do with it? Well, the first thing I want to do with it, because I'm sort of ignorant of JSON, is what, are, what do I actually have? So the first thing I did was, you know what? Well, the first thing I asked myself, the first thing I asked myself is, what do I have? What keys are in the JSON? Well, this is what gives it to you. I tend to take my queries, throw them in a the view because I want to reuse them. So if we run this, that was pretty quick, right? All right. Yeah. And the interface was pretty responsive, right? It just kind of moved along. These are, these are all the things that are, these are all of the keys that are, I think are at that first level in the JSON. So I was able to do this and say, oh, you know what? I have a creation time. There's, there's my content and comments. Here's my, if it's a reshared post, there's the update time. There's also a URL. Can you do that same thing with the nested under? with the stuff under. So I haven't gone to that next level yet. Um, so for instance, I'll show you, when you look at the comments, that looks like another, it's another JSON object. So what I have to do is probably pull that out, which would be a nested query, and then do the same thing. So I haven't, played, I haven't gotten that far yet, but you're right. This is sort of, this is the starting place, though. At least it gives me start to see what I have. Yeah. Um, so this might seem like a dumb question, but when it says URL, is it just a relative path? No, full URL. I'm, I'm getting to that. Um, other? Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing. And I said, okay, now that I know what I have, let's go ahead 
and do something that is human readable, which is let's pull out these fields and put them into a view so that I can look at something that makes some sense to the mere mortal here, right? So what I'll do here is not retrieve all 4,800 records. I'm just going to grab the first 100. 1.3 seconds. So now you see here, and I'll go back up and I'll expand the content table. This now gives me something that starts to look more human readable. In fact, I can actually read that. One of my first posts was uh, some track video time for when I was up in Monticello, um, which actually included a media. But, um, not in this one. It's, it's actually weird. This is before Google made some of their own changes. So there's no media clip listed there. Well, but how do I know that? Well, one of the things you can do in PG Admin 4 that I think is pretty cool is talk about URL. Well, I can double tap that. It gives me pre-selected text. I'm in Chrome. Right click on selected text with a URL. What does Chrome do? Let's go to that. No, yeah. It's just loading still. It's all in the it might yeah, maybe it's it it maybe the uh, college is. No, I'm going to my I'm on my okay. Uh, so that's still looking. Oh. They're still looking. <coughs> well, let's see. If they're doing deep packets, they're going to find it. So you take it. <laughs> Trust me, I won't. No. If, if take uh, count isn't giving you that in one of your files? No, this is the actual URL. Wrong. That's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll let it. Oh, there we go. <coughs> it just took a while. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I suspect this is my network, not liking the DNS servers. But okay. Um, oh, that's good. Did they change like the formatting of their path between 2011? And no, this is just it's what it's giving you is an actual URL that you can you can post in. So this is actually, like, I, I know this works because I was, I, I, was, I was doing this earlier today, so it has something to do with uh, me being on, uh, well, actually, maybe our VPN is, let's do this. Uh, the database query work. Yeah, the database query work. Let's look, let's do this. Post preview. Let me just make sure I lose my site. Oh, okay. Um, all right, we'll, we'll maybe come back to that. Maybe it'll figure itself out later. But um, some of the things I did just for, for giggles, I had no idea how many posts I did. I, didn't, I had no idea how many posts I did in any particular year. So I just put a query together to show that. No big deal, just playing around with the database to sort of get some, for me, get experience working with pulling the JSON out of the, uh, out of the, uh, the actual object, which Really, I'm not doing that because all this is doing, if I go up to SQL and look at it, it's referencing posts, which is the view. So once I created posts, everything else is, is referencing that. Um, pretty JSON. So remember when I was saying Google gave you pretty JSON? Well, I decided to put that back because sometimes I'm, you know, if if I didn't know what the key was or I wanted to see why I've got this blog for where it says comments and I want to see what was going on, it's better to look at that in a pretty format. And I didn't want to go back to the file system. So I put that pretty piece back in. And actually, the funny thing is, Postgres actually has something called pretty, JSON being pretty. And it puts those cache returns back there. So if I pull up, those first hundred rows or whatever. And now I look at this and hover over it. You guys can't see this, but that is what the pretty JSON is. That's going to look exactly like the file you get from Google. Okay. So all that aside, what about the query, right? So this is, this is really where the, um, this is what really made it worthwhile for me. 
if I just go to uh, my uh, query editor here, and I know, for instance, that I, would, I did a track that I want to sell. So I can say select star from posts where, and this is going to be the SQL way of doing it, I like, which is, I think, Postgres, I don't think that's official SQL stack. Yeah, Postgres is case insensitive version of language. Right. Okay. Um, here. So content I like, and I know that, like I said, I did a track day at Monticello. Typing track instead of Monticello because I'm an absolutely harmless fellow. Where's going to play it? Now, I run this, and you SQL people don't say anything. Oops. Helps with that. Too proper. I'll get anything back. Now, I already showed you that something said tracker. Right? Let me clean this up a little bit. So track is right there, mm -hmm. right? So what happened? What happened? What did, what did I? What did I do wrong? It's not gonna let you. It's not gonna. You don't have to put in the semicolons at the end. You have to put uh, no. percent characters or whatever. Who said percent characters? Right. Because this is literally saying that field says track. Not track is in that field. Okay. So this is the typical thing we do in SQL world. We do that. Took a while, right? Had to. Why, why did it, Why did it take a while? Did that actually search the text the field? Sequential scan. How do I know? Let's explain it. Hover over here. Sequential scan. Okay? So that query, actually I should have pulled up the time first. Oops. It was three seconds to 900 milliseconds. It's almost four seconds. Yeah, I think the first time was closer. Yeah, that's it, three. Okay, yeah. So three seconds, all right? But the, putting the time aside, it was doing a sequential scan. That's the problem, right? Because we want to use indexes wherever possible. So not only is doing it this way more difficult, because for instance, if you know, if, if I assume I did Mont, let me see, Monticello track. Well, first of all, how do I do this? Monticello? Do I put a space? You know, like what did I what did I actually do? Let's just we'll put a percent sign in there. I maybe. That works. I actually did try this before, but let's see. Okay. Now, that gave me something. Okay. But it, it's still doing a sequential scan. What if I didn't have those two words next to each other? So I put a space. Because now this is the difference between a space and uh, a, a space and a percent sign. Still finds it, right? However, what if it's reversed? So let's say track and Monte Solo. What do you think's gonna happen? Different results. Unless you actually have that string in one. Complete fail, right? All right. You won't find well, it not necessarily. Just different results. Di <laughs> That's both right. Complete fail, and that is a different result. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you could have track Monticello, and so, it would have jumped yeah. in. Yeah, I, I, I could have. So, but you get the idea here. This is awkward, right? This is not what, what we do in here. It's 2019, right? So what do we do? Well, with a full text search, we take the same thing, select star from posts, And then we're going to say where, and this is where it starts to look weird, we're going to say to TS vector. I have to say English to force it to use the index. And it's on content, which is my field. And again, because I'm doing this against posts, I don't have to do that weird JSON um, syntax. I can just say content because I'm bringing my view. 
You don't say equal, you say at, at. And instead of will be two underscore query, Postgres has something called web search. So I can say web search underscore two ETS query. And now I can say, let's, let's reverse it. Let's say Monticello, let's say track Monticello like we have above. And now what will happen here is get three things. The first one is the right post. The next two are my post two weeks ago about this. I posted all the stuff I'm talking about now, I actually posted in, in one of the Google migration uh, um, communities to help people out if they were thinking about doing this. Um, and it's probably not going to work if I show it, but the URL for that would be right there, as well as you see the date, February 20, right? Uh, here's another thing. If I explain this one, you'll see that now I'm actually using the index, okay? So it's not doing a sequential scan. If I, um, let's see, for probably about six years, I did, a, I did a financial podcast on here. So if I wanted to say investing, because I think investing is somewhere in there, I could do the same thing. 1.2 seconds, right? So the time is so the time is going down, um, or not that it's going down, but we're doing index scans, and if you you'll know that if over a certain data set, you'll see the differences. On, on my system, it's about 67 percent faster using the indexes. Most of the queries we're taking, um, once I've run them a couple of times, if I kept running sequential stuff, they were taking about 900 milliseconds. With the indexes, they're taking about 300. Okay, so 30. Um, let me see. What else I oh, I mentioned not what happens if you leave out that first piece. Well, it is still going to work. It took about the same amount of time, but if I explain this, it's a, it's a, a sequential scan. Uh, in the documentation, Postgres, this is, this is something that's documented because they, they show you two different, um, they show you with and without the one or two parameter variant, but then later on in the documentation they tell you that you have to do it with your language uh, designator here, whatever you're going to use, or whatever you create the index with so that when you do the query, you actually get the index scan. Um, so we're at 58 minutes, that's basically the talk. Um, hopefully this was a little bit interesting to you, but what I wanted to get across is just the raw power of using a database. By doing things this way, one, I'm protecting all the content I put up, but now I have a way to search through. And it's repeatable, because again, there's not going to be any duplicates. Um, it's a bad thing for a website, too, if you want. Yes, if, if I wanted to do, because at one point I wasn't, I didn't know what I was going to do next, right? So if I wanted to do what a lot of people are doing, is actually just say, I'm never going to be in this position again, I'm just going to do my own blog. Well, now I have my entire history. So this could be, you're exactly right, the back end to my own site with this content. And I can go deeper and I can show um, that next level of authors and comments. Uh, let me see. Comments. So if I hover over that, this is what you were talking about. Uh, so that's more JSON, okay? So I haven't even begun to figure out how to deal with that, but I'm assuming I'm doing some sort of sub-select to pull that out, and then I should be able to get those keys again, all right? So um, again, I wanted to show that if you, if, you, if you play around with your databases, get to really understand them, a lot of the heavy lifting that we do when it comes to writing applications, you can let the database do it.
Okay, there's there's no reason to reinvent some of this stuff because, um, like I said, it's very easy for us to write applications, but why why do the stuff that you don't have to do, right? Like you said, who wants to do worrying about inverting indexes and some of this other stuff, all right? Love the people. Any other questions? Yeah, I guess this is more a question about Google and about yeah. this. You're getting these URLs. Are you actually getting the data those URLs point to? Yeah, this, I don't, I honestly, you know what? Let's do this. Let's break, let's yeah, we break that. And now let's try to reload this and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going on, but yeah, that, that, mm -hmm. yep. That was uh, the first or second post. So that URL is the actual URL. And until, here's the other thing. Google's going to be deleting data. So this was something that was really bothering me because, you know, whether I use this or not, I have, honestly I have no idea. Knowing me, I probably will at some point. But I don't like to just throw away stuff yeah. unnecessarily, right? The hundred or so gigs that this came down in, the database itself, So, so you would still it's like 50 megs, I think. Or something. So you would still need to have a s script to grab each of those pointed to things and put them into a file. Um, I I don't know how I would do it without this in terms of the URLs, the pointers. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know how you I don't know how you would do it manually. You didn't like Google Takeout to identify URLs ourselves. are going to break eventually. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, they're deleting. They're, they're historical. historical. Yeah, they're historical. They're deleting. Google's deleting the data. Yeah. So, so the they URLs are. are useful right now because <laughs> yes. like you whether access. right. That's a good point. It's working. Whether you got the right data and right. then. But it sounds like you still need to write a script then to retrieve for each URL, put that in a file somewhere. I think that came no, down. No, the, the data, data, data is in the yeah. JSON. Yeah, it's all it's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. it's all yeah, all that stuff. The URL is it was in the JSON. Well, I'm trying to. Did you get the, the image? The, 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 the image. Was the JPEG yeah, come down with it? In the dump. In the dump. So, they're they're in the dump. Yeah, all the media, oh. all oh. that stuff is in the dump. They're, they're not deleting. They're not deleting anything in Google Photos. Is not being deleted, and that actually is in Google Photos. But like the random uh, picture you might take from like take something from your phone yeah. and then attach it to a post. That I don't know if that ends up in Google Photos. Like all the videos I post are in my Google Photos. So uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago when I when I talked about this and I've seen more people subscribe to it, that's not going away. So we've been recording videos for four years now, I think. That's not going away. Uh -huh. so, you know. Yeah, uh -huh. photos is photos is separate. Yeah, photos. Yeah, photos are separate, so it's not going anywhere. But but we we don't we won't have as nice an interface to the listing. Cor correct. No, but, no 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 no. Unless Keith starts yeah. uploading his stuff to the plug YouTube channel like I do. Or or Come on, just Keith. give it to Charlie to upload. Yeah. No, get, no. I, I I gave you access. I gave you upload access to that YouTube channel. Um, um, or I'm being, I'm being hard. Or you can write a SQL query to produce a web page that would link to the posts on Google Photos. Um, there's a lot of things we could do. My the thing I wanted to do first was make sure I had it. Right. Once I once you have the data and you can ingest it, right? Analyze it, transpose it. Then you could do whatever. You, then you know you can do whatever you want. And I actually did pull down the. Plug community. I have I have that data. I haven't gone through it yet, but they're making some changes to Google Tech up to make that stuff a little bit uh, easier to deal with. Uh, I just want to say. So we were also talking on that. You say there's a group that's a. Uh, was yeah, it a new? Yeah, Google an Mass. Yeah, Google Mass Migration is a community that they're talking about like how to throw it into something else. How to throw it into something. I mean, there's been a number of people talking about things on on my post. This is this was sort of one of the annoyances because you know programmers being programmers, why don't you use JQ? That manipulates JSON. <clears throat> it it does. Why do that if all I have to do is strip carriage returns and escape characters? I've been doing that forever. I don't need a JavaScript tool. I don't need a JSON tool to do that. Now, it does work because JQ. If you're not familiar with it, it manipulates yeah. JSON. 
but it has a way to unpreview you know, the JSON. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that. I said, but you're, what you're telling me when you tell me something like that is that you, pro you, you don't really understand the problem, right? First of all, why use JQ if I can use TR or set? Because TR and set are on every Unix system, right? Like everyone. Like even AX is probably on there, right? Uh, <laughs> JQ, maybe, maybe it isn't. Now, you know, all of us using Linux, you know, app get or yum or Pac-Man S, we're, we're going to do that. Or worst case scenario, you get in and compile it. But again, why do that if you have understanding tools? Um, but yeah, people. Are, this this has been like a pretty wide discussion in terms of. And what JQ would help you for is delving into sub 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 records with it. But Postgres is doing that for me, uh, right? So why again? And, and you're right. I got I have JQ because I didn't know what I was going to do because I didn't know how good Postgres yeah. was going to be. But this is getting me pretty far. Yeah. You know. Mark. Can you show the columns and the indexes again in that? Over here. Right. So you've got. It did not index every, you didn't index every column. No, it did not. And um, did that, you do that in a GUI or a command line to set which columns you wanted to index? Um, I would go on the, I would just... I know you showed some code. Yeah, so, so over here it, where it says... When it imported it, did it say I'll index every column and you say not to or... No, when you do this, so if I were to truncate the database so it's blank and then re-import everything, as it's importing it, right? The, if you think about it, the first time around, like for the unique index, it's it's always going to be insert because there's nothing there. If you try to do it again, now it's got data, right? So, for instance, um, I'm not saying in, I'm not saying run the index. I'm mm -hmm. saying specify, say which column I want to index. Yes, you're you're always doing that. There is only yeah. two columns: index and blob or JSON. You index the column. No, I'm indexing the JSON data in the JSON object on top of One on the unique index, I'm indexing the entire block. Which you, one of the nice things about PG is that I can look at the individual data at that first, you know, I mean there might be a way to go further down. I think there is, I just I wasn't able to get it to work. But I can at least index on that first level of keys that I showed you. So when I ran this query here. So any of these, it was easy to, to do the index on. I don't know, if, I think there's a way to directly talk further down. I just wasn't able to figure it out. Okay, so the full text grabbed those from the block. The data in those fields and then did the full text index on that. So I'm not, so this to me is very natural. This is just like anything else. I'm not doing anything special, but I'm working with a JSON object. So I'm using regular C C for and you know an un for unstructured data, you know. So I don't have to worry about JSON like at all. I don't have to think about it once I get into the system. Where you going to? No, I, 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 I see the keys. They're, they're that's what's in the JSON object. But the index I'm choosing, for instance, this one is on <coughs> content. Content. One of right. the columns is content. It's right. It's just on on the content. You could do an index on both. For instance, if I went for the unique, for the uh, prevent the, um, the duplicates, I could have done an index on the creation time and the JSON object, just as a, an additional additional thing. It's not really necessary. Um, so like, it's TF, awesome. two TS vector thing mm -hmm. is parsing the JSON again. Yeah, if you look at the results of that, it's words with scores. That's all it is. So that's how they. That's how they. Um, do the full text index and they score the, you know, based on English rules. You know, you're not going to score the, right? Yeah. So when I say uh, track time on Monticello, at Monticello, it's not scoring at. So it's not going to, in English, it's not going to score that. Right? And that's one of the nice things about doing the, the full text inserts is that now I can use a sort of web type of syntax to do my queries. It's also going to stem it for you. <laughs> so it's going to stem it. So yes. if you had. Yeah. Run, ran, and running, the stemmer will uh, recognize yep. them as the same word. Track, like, so for instance, track would actually find tracking, I think, right? Which might not be the right thing, but when you when you do a full when you do a full text search and you put a space between words, that means or. And it's looking for a distance between 
And there's all sorts of, like when you look at the documentation, there's all sorts of ways you can construct okay, so full text search. The English is giving you the stop words, stop words and the spelling list mm -hmm. and the whole Correct. thing. Correct, right? right. exactly right. And, and the nice thing is that mm -hmm. even though the database is set to English, you can do that with any other one, yeah. right? So you could conceivably set a database to English. Mm -hmm. If you're importing something in Spanish, you can still do your, your full text index in Spanish. It doesn't, it doesn't change it. You know, which is why you have to specify the language to use the index. Uh, any other questions?